Again, welcome to the Kingdom of Grace Ministries. For those that are joining us by broadcast, we thank you today. Thank you for being here. We are in service today, and we're glad to be here. Somebody just say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. This is a good day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, it's a wonderful day. Today, we're also going to share, we're going to uh, have communion service later on after, after this particular service, um, after this particular sermon. We're going to have this today. Uh, just so glad to see everybody and uh, for everybody to be here today, uh, to be with us. Um, uh, we just thank everybody who uh, uh, that's here today. Uh, uh, please, you know, like I said, we're back at church, and I just want to say this. We are uh, we're going to be moving around and doing some things that, like you see here, you know, we try to get it together. Uh, we have social distancing, but again, we're not isolating people, so let's make sure we understand that. Uh, but what we're going to have to do is we're just trying to figure out the best path. So if you see some moving around, it's not because uh, uh, we have any particular protocol. We're just trying to make everything comfortable for people together. We may have it set up a certain way, but we are trying to uh, get it to where it's conducive for the families themselves, okay? So it'll be a little moving around, and we understand that. But God bless you this morning, and so glad to be here uh, today for those that are going to be giving. Uh, please don't wait on me. I don't like to, to, to uh, I don't like picking up offense and things like that. I don't like doing it, but I know it's necessary. So what I'd say to everyone is that those that are give, the people that are paying tithes and offering, uh, we have some baskets here um, that you can uh, put your tithes and offering in, uh, here. If you are not a member of the Kingdom of Grace Ministries, you cannot pay tithes here, but you can give an offering if you choose to. But if you don't want to give any offering, you don't have to. Uh, praise God. I'm a believer that that it's the people of God, that, that uh, members of this church will be the ones that will help this sustain this ministry. That's the way it's supposed to work in the first place. Amen. Uh, praise God. How you feeling? You okay? Oh, I don't know. I, if you had a football game, you'd be better than that. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I'm, I'm from the Houston uh, area, so therefore our Texan teams, uh, the Houston teams, are not doing so well. But that's all right. A true fan can't abandon. You can't abandon your teams. I don't care. We're just going to have to rebuild them as the time goes on. Amen. Oh, amen. Some things I don't understand. I say some things that they do, I don't understand. But it's okay. We just have to. Trust God that God's going to get us a good team this year <laughs> in the years to come. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, uh, the 20th verse. And, and I'm going to read, I'm going to do a little teaching along the way. I think this is very uh, important because these are, are uh, this is an event uh, that was happening in their time during the time of uh, Jehoshaphat. And uh, Jehoshaphat being the king of Judah. At the time, and uh, some of the things that he were in, that he encountered, and how he had to operate in the midst of, Amen. 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 Let me let me qualify some of these things. Oh, okay, so right now, here in the state of Texas, uh, you know, it's funny because you know I like to I like to I like to take the events of what's happening today, and then kind of mirror them on what you see happening in some of the Bible. And it's amazing because, because uh, a few weeks ago, all of Texas were without, without power, uh, didn't have any power. Uh, our governor lied about the fact that it was windmill, the, it was the windmill that froze up. Uh, that was the big lie. There was no windmill froze up. Matter of fact, uh, it only, we don't, there's only 10% of the power. Uh, what the real issues were, well, back in 2010 and 2011, you know, there was a, a commission that got together and told the state of Texas, if you're gonna if you're gonna deregulate your energy, then you need to you need to winterize your 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 uh, um, generation uh, uh, your generators. You need to you need to be prepared to winterize that. Anybody that's ever worked in a chemical plant or refinery, they know what that means. And so you have to prepare, winterize, get it ready for, for a major storm that is about to come. Well, we all know, you know, 2021, here's a major storm hit, and uh, we were not prepared. Just like that, we were just not prepared. And they say it was some 4 million people that were out of power, but actually I believe it was more than that. 
Then when they claimed that it was rolling blackouts, it was no rolling blackouts, it was just out. I mean, it was just out. You know, we, we really don't know the full number, but you know, they were saying some 80 people died because of, uh, uh, of the cold and things like that because they didn't have any power. Amen, stay with me, stay with me. That was not a God event, it was a man event. Hello, somebody. Now, when you think about things like that, uh, you say, okay, well, you know, we were not prepared. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you know, the companies that are responsible, now they start filing bankruptcy. ERCOT filed bankruptcy, they're preparing to file bankruptcy. All of the people leaving and all of a sudden they're resigning so they don't have any uh, uh, responsibilities. Let you and I try to do something like that and they'll hunt us down. I'm just saying, I mean, these are the kind of things that, that you know, the churches, you go to any church, they're not going to talk about stuff like this. Why? Because these are the times when people are assembling themselves together that they need to hear. But when we want to talk about it, oh, you know, oh, kumbaya, oh, it's a wonderful time. It's not a wonderful time. It's not going to be a wonderful time when you see politicians are lying before us to our very face. It's amazing. We saw what happened on January the 6th and how they stormed the Capitol. And it was, it was white supremacy that stormed the Capitol. And everybody was okay with that. And they're hoping that it go away. But look, imagine if that was Black Lives Matter storming that, that place. Even the president said that. If that, that, was, that would have been a different outcome. Again, these things are right before us, and you got a whole lot of people wish that that thing just go away. We just wish they'd go away, that we just want them to go away because we don't want to have no, we just want to get back to normal. What is normal? And after all the mischief was happening, we found out last week that the governor of Texas and also of uh, Mississippi, they announced a rollback of the mask. They're going to, we're going to lift the mask. What? 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 But it makes sense to me because, like I say, when you want to get somebody off kilter and you want to, you want to, you want to pull a smoke screen, that's the first thing you do: get people thinking about other things because people are shallow, people are gullible. You won't get the people mind on something. It's like they be thinking about some squirrel, right? Because because they can't hold anything. Everything is just the things in past. I mean, January sixth. I still want to say that because because they stormed the Capitol. Had a Confederate flag. People don't forget that. Right now, right now, what's happening right now, right as we speak right now, 33 states have filed to change the voting right, the voting uh, uh, rights act. And they went in to make sure that, that these things don't happen again because they know they lost big time. And so therefore, they want to rewrite history. So 33 states right now is working against you because you voted. Hello, somebody. Let me say this again because I'll break it down for somebody. The reason why that things turned out like they did because the, the African-American community, the Latino community, and others got out and voted, period. And it was well orchestrated and it was well coordinated and got out the votes. And somebody said, it's no way, it's no way that that could have been done right. And so they tried to find all kind of ways to prove that that was that was uh, it was legitimate things, illegitimate things happening, in order to prove that the election was stolen. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying because at the end of the day, this is what's going on in the midst of what's happening today, while you're thinking about whatever you're thinking about. Somebody is not sleeping. And they're doing everything in their power to beat you in the days to come. What I told Sister Proctor is I want to have a class to teach people on the civil rights movement. 
to understand your civil rights and what that all means, to start educating people so you'll start being educated, especially our young people, about your civil rights. Most people don't know. Most people only hand down what they think they know. Most people so bored that if, they, if it's not a game associated with what's going on, uh, they simply not, it's not important to them. And yet somebody is trying, right now, you have evil minds are already looking to beat you at the polls in 2022 and it's 2021. Hello, somebody. Oh, Pastor. You know, I'll tell you, I got to make the connection because what's going to happen is if you come in here and just, oh, hallelujah, pray the Lord, and you leave, the Bible says that I wish that you have knowledge. And not only knowledge, to have godly wisdom. So when you see things coming at you, you'll know what to do, especially you young people. I want you, when, they see, when you see the steal, I want you to stop the steal for real. Amen, somebody. Those that uh, right here that's listening on broadcast, I know some of y'all say, oh, there you go. But no, it's all about education. It's all about making sure we understand because at the end of the day, God is still in control. But not only that God is still in control, Pastor Wood, God expects us to know some things. God expects us to be aware of some things that we just don't fall for the okie doke every time the okie doke happens. And so you have to be aware of some things when it's coming on upon you. So now all of a sudden, we finally start to turn the tides on on people, got people wearing masks, people are doing the things they have to do, and all of a sudden the governor of Texas says, no, we're going to lift the mask back mandate. What? No one took the shots. You, you know, they, they're taking all the numbers. So why would you do that? They were even pleading, could you wait a couple of months? But it's a smoke screen. It's to get your mind off of something else while they're doing something else behind the scenes. So you'll forget about it, and then all of a sudden you go rush into the restaurants, rush into the store, knowing good and well that, that we're not ready to recover yet. God help us. God help us. But like I said earlier, God is still in control. And when I go through the scriptures, I'm going to tie some of these things together. But uh, you'll understand. So, Second, second Chronicle. Those who can't stand, please stand as we have the reading of the word. Second Chronicles, the 20th. I'm going to do a little reading, so I'm not going to, I'm going to read a little bit, then I'm going to stop so we can sit down, then I'll continue to teach from this passage. Uh, Second Chronicles 20, starting with verse 1. And now it came to pass about after this that the sons of Moab and the sons of Amnon, together with some of the uh, mule knights, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and reported to Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, out of Haram. And behold, they are in uh, Hez Hezazon Telmar, that is, in Gedi. And I'll explain in Gedi in a little bit. Uh, Jehoshaphat was afraid and turned his attention to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to seek help from the Lord, they even came from all the cities of Judah to seek the Lord. Number five, then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem and in the house of the Lord before the new court. And he said, O Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And are you not ruler over all the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are yours in your hands so that no one can stand against you. Did you not, O Lord, drive out the inhabitants of the land before your people, Israel, and give it to the inhabitants of Abraham, your friend, forever? They have lived in it and have built you a sanctuary there for your name, saying, Should evil come upon us, the sword or judgment of pestilence or famine, we will stand before the house and before you, for, in, for your name is in this house and cry to you in our distress, and you will hear and deliver us. Now behold, the sons of Amnon and, and Moab and Mount Seir, whom you did not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt. They turned aside from them and did not destroy them. See how they are rewarding us 
by coming to drive us out from our possessions, which you have given us as an inheritance. O oh, our God, will you not just them? For we are powerless before the great multitude who are coming against us. Nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Now bow your heads with me, please. Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word. Uh, we just pray, Lord, that you would break down the word of us, that we can all understand it, Lord, and in, in simple truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. For, for a subject, I'm going to say the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. And for a subtitle, I'm going to say stepping up in the praise. Stepping up in the praise. When the situation appeared to be hopeless, then what you have to do is you have to pray. This is what I like about Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was, uh, 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 it's amazing, he wasn't a perfect guy. Matter of fact, if you look at verse 19, if you're a Bible student, you'll see that he was, he, he was in alliance with Ahab. Ahab was the enemy of God. Ahab was the king that was married to uh, um, uh, uh, Jezebel. And so therefore, the very fact that he aligned himself with Ahab, uh, God was kind of ticked at him. But you know what? Uh, even the prophet said, look here, even though God is mad at you, he's mad at you, but that's still some good in you. Amen, Amen somebody. Let me, let me stop right there. Amen. That's the reason why I got to tell some of y'all, there's nobody perfect. God may be mad at you today, but guess what? God still got a plan for your life. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. See, when you think that all hope is lost, all hope is not lost. How do you know that? Because you're still here. Amen. You're still breathing. Amen. You're still walking. You're still talking. Yeah, God may be mad at you right now, but he's not finished with you yet. Amen. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Lord. And you got to understand that Jehoshaphat, even though with all the things that he was doing and all of the associations, God said, boy, I got a plan for your life. And then when he steps into trouble, guess what he does? He go pray. Yeah. It's amazing for somebody to be on purpose. Isn't that just like you? You ain't been to church in months or something. You don't know nothing about anything. But when you get in trouble, you know how to pray. Hello, somebody. God ain't even mad at him because he, as long as you know how to pray, God said, we're in good. We, we, we good. Isn't that the Bible said, look here, bring up a child in the ammunition of the Lord or train up a child in the ways of the Lord because in the days to come, you will not depart from it. Yeah. Why? He might be busting hell wide open, but when he get in trouble, he knows how to what? Pray. Amen. God got a plan for us all. Hallelujah. Shoot. So what, what Jehoshaphat does is he said, look here, let me assemble the people together because we're going to pray. Amen. And he called people from all over the countryside. Y'all come into the city because we're going to have an assembly. I want all the noble people, I want all the, the noble men come together because we're getting ready to do what? Pray. We're not just going to pray. We're going to fast and what? Pray. Amen. Because this is a terrible situation. We got wind that our enemies are up against us. It's amazing. He said, but when you notice in his prayer, he said, these are the people, Lord, that you told us not to destroy. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, let's think about that. Yeah. Well, who were these people? They were, the, they were the descendants of Lot. Huh. Huh. God, you told us don't destroy the descendants of Lot. Y'all remember the descendants of Lot, right? The descendants of Lot was not, you know, Lot fathered a nation uh, from his daughters. So they were, they were heathenistic in nature. Then they also grew up in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah. So you know that what they were taught, they were taught those things that are more of idolatry. Hello, somebody. Where are you going with this, Pastor? Uh, some of y'all know the Word of God. Some of y'all been taught the Word of God, and at the same time, you act like you don't know nothing about God. Some of y'all want to debate God. Debate who? How you going to debate God? God is the very air that you breathe. God is so awesome that if he just removed all the air from the earth, eight billion people would just drop dead. Huh. Huh. God is amazing. 
God said, when I want to, when I really want to get your attention, when I really want to get your attention, I don't call on man. I call on the elements. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Amen. Amen. This is probably listening to one of my, you know, one of my mentors is Dr. Evans. I, I, I like, we were listening to one of his sermons and just probably shared some of that. But it was one of the things that he went to the book uh, of Job and other books that were showing that when God want to do business, he'll call on snow. Oh, uh, y'all, y'all yeah. missed it. He'll call on snow. Yeah. It's amazing. Y'all froze, but y'all still survived. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I got somebody clapping their hands. You were cold, but you still survived. Yeah. That had nothing to do with man. It had everything to do with God. Yeah. God said, look here. Now you don't have no power. You don't have no nothing. Guess what? You cold. Yeah. You cold. What you going to do now? <laughs> we don't have no power. We can't play no games. We can't watch no television. Huh? But you had gas. Hello, somebody. You had a blanket. It's amazing what a blanket can do, what a sweater can do. Amen. See, see, y'all ain't, y'all ain't saying nothing. Stay with me. I'm preaching right now. So I told you I'm going to tie things together, right? God said, I call on the elements. We'll go back in Revelation. When God was getting ready to, to, to bring about judgment on the earth, he told the angels, just withhold the wind. I'm trying to stop the wind from blowing over the over course of a time. Course of 30 minutes, don't let nothing blow. That's God. Oh, but man. No, oh, but God. See, God exposed all that stuff that was happening because God even gave us a warning. It's going to get cold. With all your technology, it's going to get what? Cold. Some of y'all still wouldn't prepare. Running down to the store at the last minute. Yeah, I mean, let me say that now. Running down to the store at the last minute. How do you think you're going to meet the rapture like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, just, I'm, being, I'm being messy. See, if you can't be prepared and be ready right now in the physical, how are you going to be prepared in the spiritual? Because the Bible says you need to always be prepared in the spiritual realm for the rapture to take place because no man knows the time, the day, or the hour. But you know it's coming. And it's amazing, though, that understand the Bible, the Bible said these are the last days. No man knows the time. No one knows the hour. But you know that it's a father because the Bible says they will deliver you up and they will kill you. What's happening with Christians right now? Killing them? Beheading them? And even now, on January the 6th, they were talking about beheading people. They were talking about hanging the vice president of the United States of America. What do you think they're going to do to you? God help us. The enemies of our soul. Jehoshaphat praying. Yes, the descendants of Lot that's coming up against us. The one that you told us not to destroy. We didn't destroy them. And now they're coming up against us. Yeah, because God had a plan. Hello, hello somebody. God had a plan. It says here in verse number two, then some came and reported to Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming up against you from the sea out of Aram, and behold, they are in, in uh, uh, Hazion uh, uh, Tamar, that is En Gedi. Let me explain what En Gedi is. So there's a dead sea over here. Let's say the dead sea is on my, uh, on my left-hand side, but your right-hand side. And then on the right, my right hand side, there's mountains up there, uh, up here. Uh, so the Proctor and I, we've been to the Dead Sea, so we, we we know how it looks like. If you're riding through the mountain side over here, all you see is the uh, 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 all you see is the Dead Sea. But behind the Dead Sea is some smaller mountains. But what's happening behind those smaller mountains, there is a trail that even though you're up high on these mountains, you cannot look down and see the army coming in that side of the mountain on the other side of the Dead Sea, which called the Trail of En So they were able to come in 
and, and bringing an army on the other side, as they're bringing in the army marching in, it was supposed to be a surprise attack, but it's not going to be a surprise attack. Oh, praise his name. And Jehoshaphat saying, God, look here, we don't know what to do. We're just simply just not prepared. We're just not prepared for what we're going to do here, so we need you to help us. Number 20 and 13 says, all Judah was standing before the Lord with the infants, their wives, and their children. They were all standing before the Lord praying. All standing before the Lord with their, uh, with their wives and children praying. Let me stop right there for a minute. There's something going on in your life right now. There's some improvements you need to make in your life right now. There's some things you need to be seeing done differently. What are you doing right now? Why don't you stop take time to pray? Amen. Just pray. Stop blaming the governor. Stop waiting on your $1,400. It's going to come. Hello, somebody. That's all they talk about. Man, I wish they passed this bill for $1,400. Man, forget about those $1,400. God may want to give you $14,000. You don't know. But because you're not really putting your trust in God, you're putting your trust in man. I'm not putting my trust in, in Joe Biden, the president. I respect him. I respect the president. It's, it's, it's different. It's, it's a different environment. Yeah, it is. But guess what? I am a Christian. I'm a child of God. God was still blessing me when, when Donald Trump was in office. Okay, okay. Some of y'all, y'all messed up now. God was still blessing me even when Donald Trump was in office. Why? Because that's what God people are supposed to be. Blessed beyond measure no matter who's in office. Why is that somebody get in office and all of a sudden your situation changed? No, your situation should remain the same. Meaning that you're blessed. Why? Because favor ain't fair. Hello, somebody. Some of y'all lost your job and you ain't missed a beat. Man. You lost your job, but you ain't missed a beat. Matter of fact, matter of fact, you're probably doing better off while you're getting your real rest. It's amazing. Some of y'all don't have to fill out no application. They're going to come calling on you. Okay, see, I, okay, I'm talking to myself now. I'm talking to myself. See, you got to understand, when you are a child of God, and you are truly a Christian, and you're truly what you're supposed to be doing, doing what you're supposed to be doing before the Lord, why are you worried about things that you have no control or power over? Why? Joseph had no one thing. Let's pray. He wasn't, y'all, if you understand Jehoshaphat, he was not a perfect man. <laughs> Matter of fact, he could have been considered a scoundrel too, just like Ahab was. But one thing about him is that he knew what? When to pray, how to pray. People who are Christians going through, they can do everything, watch all the TV shows, look at all the news, and to this day still haven't prayed. Every day, where my check? Where my check? Where my check? Did they approve it yet? Did they approve it yet? Why don't you pray that God will get them to approve it? That's a prayer. Amen. Okay, let's be a little facetious here. Okay, 2 Chronicles 20 and 14. That's what I like. Jehaziel answered the question, now answered the prayer. It says, number 14, then in the midst of the assembly, the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of uh, Jael, uh, the son of Nathiah, the Levite of the son of Asaph. And he said, listen, all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord to you, do not fear or be dismayed because of the multitude, for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. He goes on to say, tomorrow go down against them. Behold, they will come up by the accent of Z, and you will find them at the end of the valley in front of the wilderness of Jeruel. You need not fight in this battle. Station yourself. Oh, stop. Oh, I'm about to shout. It's amazing. God, gave, God said, look here, they're getting ready to go, come into a surprise attack. 
But it's not a surprise because you're going to go down there to meet him. How is it going to be a surprise attack when you show up in there right there? But God said when you show up, I just want you to position yourself. But when you position yourself, I don't want you to position yourself to fight. I want you to position yourself to praise. Mm. Oh, I feel good. Look at here. It's still COVID-19. The economy's still not where it needs to be. There's still problems that's about to come upon the, uh, the situ uh, upon this world and upon the earth. But he's saying, don't be so dismayed by that. Position yourself to be up in praise. Some of y'all, you got to praise God in advance in order for God to move. You already know what God's going to do. You knew what he was going to do from the beginning. But at the end of the day, why are you waiting on something to happen in order for you to praise God? Praise him now. Oh, praise his name. Go down to. He said, like I said, you need not fight in this battle. Just station yourself. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Jerusalem. O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out to face them, for the Lord is with you. Yeah. Go down to number 20. They arose early in the morning, went early in the morning, and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And when, and when they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, O Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Put your trust in the Lord, and God will be the, and God will establish, uh, be established. Put your trust in his prophets and succeed. When he has consulted with the people, he appointed them who sang the Lord, who sang to the Lord, and those who praised him in holy attire as they went out before the army and said, Give thanks to the Lord, for his loving kindness is everlasting. Wow. They didn't put they didn't put the mighty men in front. They didn't put the strongest warriors in front. They didn't have the machine guns in front. They put the praises in front. Somebody that knew how to pray. Somebody that knew how to give God thanks. Somebody not just lay, raise their hand and just praise God Almighty because we're already going to confuse you with our praise. It's amazing that even the enemy, the enemy want you to take off running because he wants you to be afraid. But it's amazing when you stop and turn around and start praising God, the enemy is confused. Because you're supposed to take off running. You're supposed to be afraid. You're supposed to be worried. Why aren't you worried? Why aren't you afraid? Why? Because I got praise in my heart. Yeah. Praise him on my lips. Why? Because no matter what God does, it's all well. If I die today, all is well. If I live, all is well. And when you take that kind of position, the devil knows he can't do nothing to you. Jesus said, don't worry about the one that can put your body in hell. But worry about the one that can c command your soul and your, your body to hell. Right. Yeah. See, in other words, God don't mind you being crippled and crazy. <laughs> See, sometimes you think God needs to deliver you. No, you're crippled and crazy to keep you out of trouble. Sometimes God don't mind keeping you cramped, crippled, and crazy just to keep you out of trouble, but it will save your soul. Some people, you can't give them an inch because they'll take a mile. Some of y'all, God don't give you no more than $5. Why? Because when you have 10, you go crazy. You ever seen somebody, they fine, they, they content. They got $5, they didn't know how to do it. Let me get $2 worth of gas. I got to keep the other three, and they're good. You give them $10, they lean. <laughs> Don't give them $100, man. They think they own the world. So talking to people crazy. That's the reason why God got to keep us on our toes. Give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. When they begin to sing and sing, they begin singing and praising, the Lord set an ambush against the son of Amnon, Moab, and Seir, who had come up against Judah. In other words, they killed each other. Isn't that just like God? God always confused the enemy. Your enemies set out an ambush against you. They end up killing each other. There's no honor, there's no honor amongst thieves. 
They start thinking a thought, God will drop a thought in their mind, they start killing each other. Hello, somebody. But God got a plan for your life. Yeah, he does. But you got to believe it. Too often, we don't think God has a plan for our life. We just think that he's just doing all kinds of stuff. God, God is, God is, uh, he's intentional. God's intentional. Always. You got to remember that. God don't just, some of all, we think God's just lucky. He hit and missed. God don't hit and miss. God said, look here. Look here, I just sinned based on my goodness. And I'm always good. He said, sometimes I got to wink at sin. Y'all don't even know what that means. You, God said, look here, look here. If I keep looking at you, you're going to die. So I have to, I got to look off. Because I can't forget. He said, God said, God said, I have to put stuff in the sea of forgetfulness. I have to put it there. <laughs> no, but God got to command himself to forget. Because he don't forget. He said, he said, you know what, I have, to I have to command myself to forget about this because I don't forget your sin is going to come up before me and now i got to judge you. Some of y'all so foolish, I got to weep, I got to weep because if I, if I don't weep, I'm going to say, man, I'm about to kill this, though. <laughs> yeah, go through the Bible. You know, God was going to kill Moses. We don't know what for. God said, look here, God saw to kill Moses. God said, no, let me weep, let me weep. Yeah, God gonna kill some of us too. God said, no, no, let me wink, let me wink, let me wink. See, y'all know I'm being a little funny about this, but y'all know I'm telling the truth. This is Bible. Amen. You know, the way we try to we try to make God all stiff neck. God ain't stiff neck. God got a sense of humor. Yeah. I prove it. Miriam was talking about, talking about, I'm, I'm Moses holy. I'm I'm holy just like Moses. You know. And the whole argument was against Moses' black wife. Yeah. yeah. It was, that was the whole argument. Well, I'm just as spiritual as Moses is. I'm just as spiritual as, a, a, as Aaron is holy. I'm, I'm not, you know, I pray to the same God. And then God struck her with the lepers and made her just pure white. Okay, y'all yeah, yeah, didn't get that. He struck her with the lepers. It means she turned pure white like Snow White. He turned her snow white because he was complaining about, about his black wife. Uh huh. It had to be Moses had to pray for her to restore her. Uh huh. And then, he, then he said, I'm going to put you out to camp so you can go out to camp so you can purify yourself just like everybody else to prove to you how, how special you are. See, God got a sense of humor. You better be careful when you're over there, you know, trying to play with God. God, you ain't never done nothing for me, but shut your mouth. But shut your mouth. Because God will show enough tad up for you. Just so you can come along begging. Jesus Christ gave the parable of the, of the, of the prodigal son. Look here. He took all this stuff. You know, in those days, they give you your inheritance. They don't wait till you die. You say, well, give me my inheritance. He took it and spent everything. Found himself in a pig pen. Getting ready to eat the pig food. The Bible said that no angel spoke to him. God didn't speak to him. Nobody said, now this is Jesus telling the sparrow. The Bible said, and he came to himself. Amen. Sometimes you got to come to yourself. You got to realize where you come from. You got to realize where you were born. You got to realize that, wait a minute, they didn't train me like that. They taught me like this. I know better. Amen. Sometimes you got to come to yourself. Wait a minute, why am I? Doing all this when I don't have to be here. Amen. Let me go humble myself. Huh. That's wrong with the world today. They want to always pull a fast one, but nobody want to humble themselves. Oh, God help us. Go to Psalms 91. And one and one says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my strength, my God in whom I trust. For it is He who delivers you from the snares of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. 
He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wing you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrows that fly by day, nor of the pestilence that stalk in darkness, nor of the destruction that lay waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. Hmm. Let me stop. Too many Christians forgot that was even in the Bible. Let's say you got corona and you survived, you still live. Now you got something to talk about. Now it's a testimony. But also, maybe God was trying to get your attention. Hello, somebody. But I'm just one of those ones that believe that I don't care who cough on me now. I don't want you to cough on me. I don't want you. I'm going to wear my mask. You wear your mask. We're going to do all the things we need to do. But if you cough on me uh, uh, unintentionally, yeah, I'm going to wipe my face. I'm going to get my wipes because I got wipes in the car. I got all kinds of stuff. You know, but here's the thing. Bob said, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You coughing on me just to intentionally get me sick, it won't prosper. Amen. Amen. It won't prosper. Uh-uh. If you try to feed me some deadly poison, and you try to trick me and make me drink something, it shall not come near me. It shall harm me. You know, the reason why I tell you, be careful. Be careful, people. Young men, young women, be careful. You know, right now in the day, that, that's what they have. They got human trafficking happening right now in the United States of America like never before. They're trying to get boys and girls that they're trying to kick. And they'll put stuff in your drink. They'll put stuff in your food. You need to be careful. Don't trust everybody. Don't trust everybody. I have a coworker who lost her son, 24 years old, lost his son. And, and in her mind, in her testimony on the channel news, on, on the TV news, she said that, yeah, they lured my son over here to set him up so they could steal his car. They didn't go into details what that was, but I can assume all kinds of things. People were luring you just so they could rip you off. You thinking you can trust people. You can't trust nobody. i never forget that was a television uh, 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 passage on, on news where one went and bought some, uh, 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 sold her cell phone for $700, uh, an iPhone, and they gave her some money in an envelope, and she saw those $100 bills being greedy, but she didn't. She just looked at the envelope and didn't take the money out. The money was, was TV money, was movie money, was fake money. It was a $100 bill, but it was a fake $100 bill. I said to myself, who's going to give you $700 for a used iPhone in the first place? Hello, somebody. Uh, see, see I'm, uh, okay, the uh, pastor. See, pastor, I was just going to take it and trade it in. I know they're going to give me everything for it, but at least when I take it and trade it in, I don't have to worry about no gain. In other words, God will protect you. God will see you through. You have to be wise in all these things. You can, God will do what? See you through. Step up in the praise. Stop all worried about everything all the time. You don't have to worry about certain things. Certain things you don't have to worry about. Most of the time, all you have to do is praise God and ask God for wisdom. That's what Jehoshaphat did. God, help us. Give us, give us the answer. Show us what we need to do, how we need to do it. Guess what God's going to do? Give you an answer. But if you never ask him, how is he going to give you something? You say, you have not because you ask not. But then when you ask him, you asking you asking the miss. No. Let, let, me, let me give an example of that. Let me give an example. See, it's one thing to say, Lord, bless me today so I can help somebody. Right? And then with God gonna test your resolve. So God gonna give you $20 to see what you're gonna do to go help somebody. All of a sudden now he give you $20, but now that ain't no help. That ain't enough money. You, you, you don't want that, so you don't go help anybody. But God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test you in a few things, little things, right? Here's what we pray. God, let me win the lottery so I can help somebody, so I can help the church. God said, you ain't helping nobody. 
Because you couldn't even use the $20 to do anything with. How you going to use a million dollars to do something with? Uh, okay, that's too real, ain't it? That's too real. That's too real. So stop playing with God. God tests us every day. I, I never forget. I, I, y'all hear the story, and then I'm going to close. I want to, we're going to go into our, uh, into our uh, communion service. The, uh, so one, one Christmas, God had blessed me real good. I'm doing fine, and, and uh, I'm on my way to the gallery. I was going to get something in the gallery a couple of years ago. And uh, I'm driving to the Galleria, and y'all know Pastor don't like giving nobody no money on the streets. I, to me, I, I ain't, you don't, you're not getting nothing out of me on the corner. I'm just serious. That's how, that's how I thought. That's how I felt. Whether you were real or not real, I was just equal opportunity. I ain't giving nobody nothing. So one day, I'm sitting here on the corner, I'm about to make this turn, and the Holy Spirit said, give him $20. I said, what, huh, what, who, me, what? With nobody in the car but me. I knew the Holy Ghost talking to me. So then I said, I said, I, you know, I'm being cute. I said, so, you know, the light was already about five, it was like two minutes, three minutes, the light was, was green, it was red already. I said, well, Lord, you know what? If this guy is here by the time the light turned green, i give it to him. By the time I got those words out of my law, looked to the corner, that guy was standing in my, standing in my, my door. I'm like, oh, it scared me. I said, well, I guess that's the law speaking to him. I had to peel off my $20 and give him that $20 bill. And the man said, you know what, sir, thank you very much. This will feed me for a week. And I thought about that. So you got to be willing to help somebody. Yeah, you do. But you got to pray. Even in that position, Lord, I'll, I'll do it if you tell me to do it. But, you know, you know how I feel about it. I don't feel like giving him nothing. I said, no, you're going to have to break down this time. Why? God said, I'm going to let you break down this time because I'm going to bless you in the future. Amen. 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 How many of y'all know that God's going to bless you in the future? Amen. Raise your hand. Amen. So give him some praise now. Hallelujah. Give him some praise now. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, thank you for all that you're doing. We praise you right now for what you're doing and what you're all about. Amen. Amen. Right now we're gonna make a transition, and we're gonna make, make a transition for for the uh, um, for our communion service. At this time, we're gonna shut down the broadcast, and we're gonna say, okay, thank the old that that was here by this live broadcast. I hope that you heard something that would would bless your soul. Uh, so let us pray, Father. We thank you, God, for all that you're doing. We thank you, Lord God, for this day, for this message. We pray for those, Lord God, that were not able to attend this service, Lord, but that was uh, that was listening to the sound of my voice. I pray, God, that you will continue to bless us and to be with us, Lord. Help us to know that you're God all by yourself, and beside thee there is no other. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. We commit everything into thy hands, for you're God all by yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless y'all. Right now, y'all just stay in place. What we're going to do is have the... Um, young man or somebody come help with the uh, communion service. Uh, we're gonna do communion service here. The, so so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna probably line up on this side, but do it in a social distancing type of way. I don't want everybody to get up at one time, uh, get a few people up. What we're gonna do is, uh, as you come by, those that are on that front row, you probably want to either back up or, or move somewhere else. Uh, so, so just so you can protect yourself. Alvin, you can move the camera and stuff, but that should be. Um, uh, yeah, just just back. Uh, yeah, yeah. And and again, I, I'm you know I feel okay, but I just want to make sure that this is for your own protection. Um, yeah, thank you. Come on, young man, y'all can help brother Muhammad. And, uh, yeah, for those that's going to participate, I mean, again, let me say this. If you don't participate, nobody's looking at you funny. Something we all have to get ourselves together on. So just remember that. Um, it's been a long time since we've been together as a church. Yeah. So those on this side, uh, let's just do this side. For yeah, those that will participate on this side, come around to this side over here, right? And social distance. So when you come by. You, you know, again, when you're with family, it's different, but I'm just saying social distance is enough for your families. <laughs> 